This is Andrew Dilloff, the Wishmaster. And you are now entering the great cinema chop shop. Enjoy your day. <laughs> hey, David Wong. Pretty fucking pretty. People have waited in line just to share this experience of Venom, Candyman, Night Living Dead, The Rock, Final Destination. But I want you to know you are now entering the Cinema, cinema Chop Shop. shop. Whip a top top and a pop pop pop. No pop 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 pop. Cinema Chop Shop. What's going on, everybody? It's Davey from the 80s, and you are now entering the Cinema Chop Shop. So park your ass right there. While you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you'll see a Patreon account. If you click it, you can be a member. All you got to do is try to recommend movies and music and trailers to react. Just click that damn link. Now, with that being said, we're here today to review Acolyte season or episode four. I'm assuming this is probably this is going to be season one. Now, if you guys have not watched my previous video on Acolyte already, I did a full breakdown with Del Boy from Movie Mash. We broke this show down logically, episode one through three. Go ahead and check it out. Um, now, I've already watched episode four, and you know I, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to sit here and mope and bitch and complain like the rest of these YouTubers out here. I'm going to approach this show logically. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's get into it. But before we get into it, I'm going to have to give you guys a warning. And that warning is because we are going to go into full-blown spoiler category because, I mean, I can't really talk about the pros and the cons without really going into spoilers. So let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? Now, this episode picks up right off the back of the other one. The other episode was about the background of May and Osha and how they became what they became, right? And this episode picks up after that, and it's, it's Osha planning to go with Soul and the rest of the Jedi's to try to get May before she kills, uh, you know, the, the Wookiee Jedi, and then we pick up on May's journey where she's going with her little sidekick and how they are trying to find the Wookiee and kill him to please the master, right? Now, Here's my problem. Here's my problem with the show. This is where the writing is starting to get bad. Why, do you ask? Because it is teased that May is kind of having a change of heart. She's had a change of heart out of nowhere, right? But can we really be surprised? Nah, we're not. We're not surprised at all. Why? Because we've seen this repeatedly throughout Star Wars. We have seen freaking uh, Anakin go from the light to the dark. We saw that chick in Obi-Wan go from the light to the dark. This has really been a... Uh, I mean, we've also seen freaking um, Kylo Ren do the same thing. This has been a freaking staple in Star Wars, and I am not surprised at all. Um, I think they kind of, they, they kind of shot their load off, and it's now... They're becoming a one-trick pony. I think they really have to start coming up with more original ideas. Now, originally, I wasn't too distraught about Trinity dying. But the more that this show continues, I get more bothered by it. Why? Because every single top priority, top-notch, like, you know, the cream of the crop, Jedi, they end up getting killed. And not only do they get killed in the most ridiculous fashion... The only one that really went on like a G is Trinity, right? So I really, I, that's the reason why I didn't get bothered by Trinity because she went out like a gangster. Like she was out, they actually fought. Um, Master, whatever his name is, oh boy, that freaking drank the juice, like the uh, the freaking <laughs> drank the cyanide Kool-Aid, the Jim Jones juice. That guy, I don't know. Like he, he didn't put up a fight. He just drank the damn juice. So that was kind of a little bit lackluster. And now we sat back and we thought, well, damn, she's really going to fight. Um, the Wookiee Jedi, let's see how this goes out. And then what happens? She walks up and my man's has a hole in the chest. And again, when I saw that, 
first thing that popped in my head was surprise, 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 surprise. But not really, not really, because this is super predictable. I wasn't surprised by that at all, and especially with the show that continuously kind of kills off the main, the most interesting characters. I, I'm really not surprised at all. Um, throughout this show. We've, we've been introduced to a lot of different characters that we just don't really care about. Me, personally, I haven't really made much connection to these characters. I've had a slight connection to Osha and her sister May, but now, after this randomized flipping, you know, uh, freaking May probably coming to the light side, I don't know how I feel anymore. Uh, and then another thing is we have the grand appearance of the man himself. The man himself, the Sith behind all of it. And my man is wearing a, <laughs> he looks like he's wearing one of the helmets from Daft Punk. And I, I, I'm i not really digging the Sith helmet. I, I It's kind of Kylo Ren-ish mixed with Daft Punk, mixed with like a World War II helmet. I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm kind of like, I, I'm kind of perplexed by it. Like I'm not really 100% digging it. And Whoever this said this, he's hella strong because at the flick of the wrist, he sends everybody flying. He killed Master Wookie dude sim single handedly, I guess. And then he flicks freaking May with a, with one finger, and then he pushes every single Jedi. And there's about five or ten of them. They're getting ready to jump him. And the episode cuts. And I mean, this was really like the climax of the episode. This was the only interesting part of the episode. Everything else in this episode dragged. It really felt pointless. It was a lot of useless dialogue. And it, it felt like we just... Because they were trotting through the foot, the woods. Majority of the show. It wasn't really entertaining. Um, and I, it really didn't give any backstory to anything. The only thing that we got is that there's a possibility that May is going to flip. Now, another thing is... They made it very obvious. They made it very obvious who the master really is. Because... All of a sudden, May hangs up the dude that she's with. I don't, I don't know his name, right? She hangs him up, and he is dangling up there. She leaves him there. All of a sudden, she makes it to the Wookiee location. He's dead. The only other people, I mean, yeah, there's some stragglers outside, right? There's like, um, there's some stragglers outside and things like that, but you can kind of tell that he is. If they're trying to trick you, they're doing a horrible job at doing this because it is blatantly obvious that the dude that's kicking it with her is probably the Sith Lord that's been, that's her master. That's the dude that's been working with her the whole time, especially because I forgot the exact dialogue but when they're walking. Oh, when they're walking and, and basically he tries to turn her by using her sister and Master Soul's relationship against her. But she was like, oh, like, well, how was she? He was like, oh, I don't know. Like, you know, she wasn't, I didn't really get to talk to her like that. But she seemed really, really happy to be in Master Soul's present. You know, and it, it, that was done to kind of like steer up uh, May's anger and animosity towards the Jedi in order for her to kind of accomplish the mission. That's some straight up Sith shit. So it's like, at this point, I'm not really, I, I'm not really buying it. I, this, If this is supposed to be a twist, it's a terrible freaking twist. Uh, if this is a bait and switch, I'm going to be kind of disappointed because uh, that's a terrible freaking bait and switch unless like the Sith Lord is somehow like occupying his mind or something. But this is the show where you really feel like the writing is bad. I mean, of course, one can question a lot of the writing throughout the series. I feel like the writing has been OK. I feel like it hasn't been ridiculously terrible. But this episode, this episode is definitely the one where uh the writing is a little bit bad. So uh, I, I guess we got to see what, what this leads into in the next episode. If the next, I'm assuming the next episode is going to start off with a, with a, with a Jedi fight, because I mean, it ends with um, the Lord, you know, and all the Jedi is flying back. So I think this is going to finally, finally, we're going to see some lightsabers battle. That's one thing that we haven't really seen in the show. We haven't seen, we've seen zero lightsaber fights. We see some hand to hand combat, which is amazing. You know, but I think that for the most part, this this episode is probably like one of the worst. And it, since it's one of the worst, I'm going to have to hit you with one of these. Obi-Wan. 
Obvio. Obvio. It's obviously bad, right? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. We just gotta. They just gotta write better. Um, I guess we'll see what happens in the next episode. But it really feels like they probably could have condensed this episode with the next episode, depending on what happens. I guess we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. Do you guys think that this shows that this episode was mediocre, just like I thought? I thought it was really. I thought this was a bad episode. I felt like it led to nothing. I kind of felt like it was pointless. It felt like filler. Um, do you guys? Did you guys get a chance to watch my other breakdown of the series so far? Let me know in the comment section down below. And you are now exiting the Cinema Chop Shop. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button on the way out. Until next time, adios. Subscribe now, the choice is yours. You're now exiting the cinema church. <laughs>